Cavallini has completed 96 passes for 1,267 yards. He has a percentage of just over 49%. He has thrown for eight touchdowns. He's had 11 picked off. Wing to the right is Schubert. Wide to the left is Scott. Hand off to Walter Payton. Sliding to the right side. It pops out of the 30 to 35 to 40. The 45 to 50. And out of bounds. It's making territory knocked out by Paul Kraut. At about the 46-yard line. And there's a 28-yard run by Mr. Explosion himself on the very first play of the ball game. Nice way to start the game. Steve Schubert's in there, the wide receiver, and played the bow rather. Rather not in uniform today. He's out with the flu. He came down with the flu on Thursday. Instead of getting better, he got worse. Peyton and Noah Jackson had the flu, but they're okay. Also on the inactive list is the tight end Chuck Bradley out with the flu. 29-yard pickup for Walter Payton. First down for the Bears on the Vikings. 46-yard line. Oh, they got the number one rushing offense in the league, and the Vikings only 19th in rushing defense. Wide to the left is Scott. Wing back to the right. Hand off to Peyton. There's a uh, repeat of the first play. Bounces away from attacker at the 30 and out of bounds. At the 25-yard line, Walter Payton. Carl Heller had him, couldn't hold him. And Fred McNeil and Sutherland finally chased him out of bounds on the near sidelines. That was a repeat of the very first play of the ball game. And Peyton carried it down, and they're going to mark the ball, I believe, inside the 25-yard line. They may call for a measurement on the near sidelines. Walter Payton with 1,100. All right. Bashnagel will hold. The snap is down. It's going to be a fake, and Bashnagel throws, and it's incomplete. He underthrew his intended receiver, who was Don Reeves on the play, and Bashnagel never really got the ball away as he ran to the left side. And so the Bears fake a field goal and come up empty-handed, and the Vikes will take over at their own 21-yard line. He was trying to run left and throw right, which is very difficult to do, and he threw a knuckleball. Yes, for 25 years, it's been a guess. Next time you drive into Checker, ask for your Chicago Bears football schedule. It's free just for the asking at Checker gas stations. First down for the Vikes on their own 21-yard line. Deuce backfield, slot to the right. Now coming in motion to the near side is Sammy White, last year's rookie of the year. Quick pitch to form, and he drops the ball, picks it up, and there's flags all over the play, and the, the play will be whistled dead right there. Lee was going to pitch to Foreman, moving to the right side. It was a bad pitch off, and uh, there were two or three penalty flags thrown at about the same time, and they're going to have a confab down there. The referee is Gordon McCarter. The umpire is Paul Trapinski. Headlinesman, Jerry Seaman. White split wide to the right, deuce backfield. McClanahan and Foreman. And Bobby Lee back to pass. Swings it out the right, flat to Foreman. He's got two men to beat. Tries to juke away, and he is brought down at the 22-yard line. A nice tackle by Gary Fensick, the strong safety who leads the club in tackles with 92 in his second year from Yale. Fensick and Muckensturm had him dead to rights over there. He wasn't going to go anywhere when he got that football. Foreman is the leading receiver on the Viking line of scrimmage, the Viking 23. There's the snap. Not much of a rush. And he hits a line driver, bouncing inside the 40. And this one's going to help the Vikings as it rolls inside the bear 20, down to the 15, and it's going to roll dead inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Flavo hit a line driver away from Bashnagel, and it bounced at the 30 and carried all the way down on the roll inside the Bear 10 at the 9-yard line. A 68-yard punt by Claybo, his longest of the year. And with 9.16 left to go in the first quarter here at Soldier Field, there's no score. The Bears nothing, the Vikings nothing. Wide to the left is Scott. Hand off to Peyton on third and two. Runs into his own blocker and managed to get out to the 18-yard line. He was brought down by Jeff Wright again, the strong safety in his seventh season from the University of Minnesota. 5'11", 190-pounder, two yards on the ground. Slot right, eye formation, quick pitch to Peyton, cuts back now, loops to the outside, turns the corner to 30, that steps across the 35, the 40, and out of bounds on the near sideline at about the 43-yard line. Again, the free safety, Paul Krauss, the 14-year veteran from Iowa, knocked him out of bounds, and Robin Earl threw a key block. Indeed he did. Well, you pick up everything, McConnell. <laughs> First down for the Bears at the Chicago 41 as Peyton lugs it 11 more yards. And Walter now has 64 in the first quarter of play. That was Jeff Seaman that Robin Earl took out. Allowed Walter to turn the corner. And he gives to Peyton coming up the middle across the 45, twisting and squirming to about the 47-yard line. They never do pin him down. They anchor him right there. McNeil along with Krauss and Jimmy Marshall. The three of them pin him, and it's across the 46. We'll call it the 47-yard line. It'll be second down and four, a long four. Marshall grabbed him, but couldn't bring him down. He carried Marshall about four yards. The Vikings are not making crisp tackles. The one thing about the Vikes, though, they'll yield a lot of yardage, but not too often uh, a lot of points. Slot to the left now, I formation. Second down, four yards to go. The Bears just across their own 46-yard line. 
Quick pitch now to Payton. Cuts back in off the block. Struggles upfield of the 49-yard line. Marshall over the top. Seaman on the bottom making the tackle on the play with help from Eller who tripped him. And the ball will be spotted at the 49-yard line. Their middle linebacker, Jeff Seaman, was not playing. There's a handoff to Payton, and he gets very little yardage. He was uh, ran spun right around at the line and uh, pinned right there. He actually ran right into his blocker, Reeves saw it. Matt Blair pulled him down short of the first down at the uh, 49 and a half. We'll call it the 50-yard line. So the Bears are forced to punt on fourth and two, the ball at the midfield stripe. Bears looking good here. I like the way they're coming out today. If they aren't up today, they'll never be up. Bobby Lee, three out of three for 16 yards. So far, sticking with a shortstop. Rashad and White are split wide, and they give to Foreman. Trying to slide to the right side. It's chopped down behind the line a foot or two. Tom Hicks came in there. And let me tell you, when you run by Ed White and Ron Yerry, you've accomplished something, and those are the two guys trying to block for Chuck Foreman. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and six yards to go. And that means the Bears will go with five defensive backs, and uh, Spivey and Buffon coming in, and Hicks and Muckensturm coming out. The 11-year veteran, Doug Buffone, will play the linebacker in the pass prevent defense. Wide to the near side is Rashad. Double wing right, a slot. Back to pass, Bobby Lee. Rushed, close, down the near side, and it's almost picked off, intercepted and dropped. Cutting in front of the intended receiver, Rashad, was Doug Plank, who had a real good shot at making the interception. Fensick was there, might have been Fensick. Was Fensick. And uh, the ball fluttered. He was underthrown. He claims he was interfered with by Rashad. Great job coming up there by Fensick. Played it beautifully. There is the end of the first quarter of play here at Soldier Field. The score, the Bears nothing, the Minnesota Vikings nothing. Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, that's a battle of survival there for both the Bengals and the Dolphins. Three men deep now for the Vikings, and there's a snap, and Parsons gets away kind of a, well, it's a fooler, a driving kick, and it's fumbled by Graham. Schubert down a big pile up, but I think the Vikes may have gotten it. to give to Peyton. Hurdles over the right side and gets down to about the 12-yard line, and he leaps over about four bodies there, including a couple of his own teammates. Power football, they're going to try to blast it out. They're still about a yard and three quarters away. It's second down goal. Light off the tight end on the right side. Parsons on the left. Wing to the left. Deuce backfield on second and goal inside the Viking two-yard line. Avellini with a call to give to Peyton. Following his blockers, trying to turn the corner to the right side. Gets in for the touchdown. He just barely got outside of Mark Mullaney and Reedy Sorey through the block at the last moment. And Walter turned the corner on the right side and skipped into the end zone for his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Bears finally put six points on the board with 6.43 to go and a half at 6 nothing Chicago. Reedy Sorey took out two minutes for the Vikings that time to allow Peyton to turn the corner, putting 
blocks on both Mullaney and Nate Wright. To give a lot of credit to Reeve Story on this scamper as Walter Payton goes in from a yard and a half out for his 11th touchdown of the year. Here's the extra point. Bob Thomas, 18 of 20 in the PAT department, but now we've got Vince Evans holding. Reserve quarterback, Bashnagel normally holds. They're just snapped. The ball is down. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Bears lead the Minnesota Vikings 7 to nothing with 6 minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the first half. It took them eight plays to traverse the 24 yards, but they got it done. With 12 yard completion. Slot right, Deuce backfield and lead. A throw on first down. Swings it out the right flat, and it's dropped by McClanahan. The ball was underthrown a bit, and Brent kind of reached down for it, couldn't hang on to the 35 yard line. Incomplete, second down 10. The Vikes at their own 33 yard line. Bobby Lee is four out of six now for 28 yards. No quarterback sacks today, and of course, uh, Avellini has yet to attempt the pass. Rashad split about five yards to the left and wide to the near side is White. Back to pass is Bob Lee. Has time. Throws a long one. A lobber down the middle. It should be intercepted by Virgil Lyman. It is at the 30 yard line. It was overthrown and set it for Rashad. Blake was back there along with Lyman, and Virgil Lyman just came up with his first interception of the year and the 11th for the Bear football team. Doug Blake was the center fielder that time, and he was helping out. And they had double coverage on the Minnesota receiver that time, and the ball was overthrown, and Livers was there to make the grab. And for Livers, that's his first first interception of the year. He had three last year. Yes. Deuce backfield. First down for the Bears at their own 38. Pavellini with a call. Inside handoff. Big hole. Peyton up the middle. Another first down, a 23-yard shot by Peyton on a gaping hole up the middle. It's also the seventh time in 10 games that Peyton has run for 100 yards. And that ties Rick Caceres' single-season mark for the team. Quick pitch to Peyton on the right side. Runs finally, turns the corner to 35, to the 30. The 25 still on his feet and out of bounds. At about the 21-yard line over on the far sideline. Again, Paul Krause running him out with help from Nate Wright and Jeff Siemens. And Reedy Sorry, the pulling guard on the play, through a key block to spring Walter around the corner. Avellini is one out of one. A five-yarder to Peyton. On a draw to Peyton. Peyton cutting him laterally. Breaks away. Hit the 25 to 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Walter Peyton seemed to be boxed up and all of a sudden changed directions and killed it away from the first tackler. And Paul Krause finally caught up from behind to spill him at the 17-and-a-half-yard line. Jeff, Jeff Seaman had him dead to rights, and Walter broke the tackle. It was an ankle tackle of that. Evans will hold the Viking 27-yard line. There's a snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, and it is good! 37-yarder by Bob Thomas, and the Bears have taken a 10 nothing lead here with 43 seconds left to play in the first half. 53 yards and 8 plays, Brad. And uh, Lee is going to let the clock run out. And the gun sounds, the first half is history here at Soldier Field, and as the team head to the locker room, the Bears lead the Minnesota Vikings. The Bears' defense had not only shut out the Vikings in the first half, but had limited them to merely 52 total yards. Pretty good for a defense that ranked 13th in their division. Offensively, there was a small matter of the 204 gained on the ground, 144 of them by wonderful Walter Payton. But on their first possession of the second half, the Bears could not move the ball, thanks in part to pressure by the Viking front four on Bob Avellini. Here, four minutes into the third quarter, a key play occurred. One willing and eager participant was number 59, Viking outside linebacker Matt Blair, while definitely an unwilling one was Chicago punter Bob Parsons. Blair came crashing through to block Parsons' punt and run it down on the 10. From there, it was an easy score, the Vikings' first of the game, and against the Bears' lowly defense, there was absolutely no reason to think it would be their last. Blair's exuberance and joy was understandable, for the four-year man from Iowa State had put his team back in a game it had to win, for the Vikings were well aware what a victory would do for the Bears today. Also with Tarkenton out, it was obvious that points were not going to come in bunches today. The Bears have won a number of close games this year. The latest came two weeks ago when they defeated Kansas City by one point on a Bob Avellini pass with three seconds left. Now with the score 10-7 in their favor, they were involved in still another tight game that would go right down to the wire. 
On Chicago's possession after the Vikings touchdown, Walter Payton running behind the blocking of number 69, Revi Sori, increased his yardage total another 19 yards, but the Bears couldn't capitalize on it and had to punt. Sammy White inside of Ahmed Rashad. And uh, the play action fake and a pass out of the left flat and out of Rashad looking for a block and he is hustled out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Fine play by Virgil Livers. Two and five, eight and a half, 175 pounds, wouldn't be intimidated. It's getting very overcast now and threatening here. We're supposed to have snow flurries this evening. The temp Why not hope for the whole ball of wax? Well, <laughs> Schubert wide to the left. Scott standing wide to the near side. There's a straight pass out of the right side to Scott, but he cannot run by Matt Blair, who forces him out of bounds. At the bare 26-yard line, there were three blockers in front. Latta, Piper, and Lick were all in front with Sorry over there, but uh, Blair was behind the wedge. And James Scott couldn't clear him on the near sideline. It'll be third down and four yards to go. So sure, even if the Bears win today, though, it's going to be experience on the return. And the Vikes, for the first time all day, have it offensively on the Bears' side of the 50-yard line. And the give. And a big haul for Clenahan. Up the middle, spins away at the 40 and gets knocked down at the 35. Maybe the 34-yard line. A trap up the middle. Wayman Bryant made the tackle on the play with help from Gary Fensick. But there's the longest ground gain of the afternoon for the Vikes across the Bears' 35 to the 34-yard line. I'm sorry. In motion goes White. Tucker's in it tight end now. There's a play action fake. Lee drops back to pass now. Lobs it over the middle. Tucker has it at the 10 to the 5 to the 3 yard line. First and goal. The play action fake and Bob Tucker, who was acquired from the New York Giants, was an all pro and tight end a couple of years ago. Gathered that one in over his shoulder. Doug Plank knocked him sprawling. Deuce backfield. The Vikes like to throw in this type of situation. It's second and goal from the two yard line. And there's a collision in the backfield. And Lee gets nailed at the three yard line as he collided with his running back, Bob Miller. No, Keller. All right, Tom Hicks made the tackle on the play. He handed off to Mark Keller, and Keller bobbled the ball right back into the arms of Bob Lee. It was a fortunate break for the Vikings as they muffed that handoff. Steve Craig, a tight end out of Northwestern. Wide to the near side. It's a double wing formation. Double wing left. And Lee, quick jump pass in the middle, intercepted! Intercepted by Hicks, and he gets back out to the nine yard line! What a play! A jump pass right over the middle, and Tom Hicks was there in front of the Viking receiver and picked it off there about a yard deep into the end zone and brought it back out to the nine yard line. What a turnaround for the Bears! Tommy Hicks in his second year out of Illinois with his first big league interception, and what a play it was, and the Bears have it at the nine yard line, still leading the game 10 to 7. Boy, there is a break. A great play by Hicks. He's good back there on pass defense. As soon as uh, Lee made a quick jump pass, it looked like it was going to be seven points. There was Hicks. It was intended for Bob Tucker. All right, slot to the left, Deuce backfield. And the give now to Peyton on a sweep to the right side. Try the square through. Break one tackle. He's on his feet at the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. And finally still by Nate Lake and Fred McNeil. Coming down the near sidelines, he was one step from going on. Side, he broke a tackle right at the line of scrimmage, and the Bears are out of the hole at the Chicago 31-yard line. Yeah. Oh, the Bears just inside the Viking 29, slot right, high formation. Abilene, and a busted play, and he's going to lose yardage. He is dumped at the 30-yard line. He turned around to hand the ball off, and nobody was there. Matt Blair made the tackle on the play, but that was simply a busted play, and Noah Jackson, in frustration, slams his arms down at his side to he leaped the offensive unit to the near sideline. It looked like Walter Payton was the man he was going to hand off to. It looked like he went back to give it to the second ba uh, back in the eye, and that was Payton, and Payton uh, wasn't there. He had gone into the line. Payton, the deep man, Musso, the short man in the eye. Long count by Abilene at the Viking 48. And play action fast. Rolls to his right. Pumps once now, throws it, and it's going to be picked off by Nate Wright. Intercepted and out of bounds at the 37-yard line in Viking territory as he was all over the intended receiver, James Scott. And there's the first interception thrown by Abilene today, his 12th of the year. And that's the first fair turnover this afternoon. Timeout is called with 8.52 to go in the game. The score remains. The Bears 10, the Vikings 7. And with Rick Caceres for a single season record for the Bears. Less than four minutes to go now. It's second down eight, the Bears at their own 32-yard line. They give to Walter again. Breaks to the outside of the 40. To the 45, the 50. The 45, the 40. He's down the five side line. He's got two in the beat. And he gets the ball with a turn and out of bounds. Walter Payton, one step from going all the way. Nate Blake finally came over from an angle that just barely tip him up out of bounds. A sensational run because...
because he had to get around Nate Wright and Paul Krause. I didn't know how he could do it, but somehow he sped past both of them after hurtling somebody at the line of scrimmage. A 59-yard run. That gives Peyton now 269 yards. He is four yards away from O.J. Simpson's league record of 273 set against the Lions last Thanksgiving day in Detroit. They're on their feet at Soldier Field. Fourth down, goal from the six-yard line. Deuce backfield, Abilene to Peyton on a sweep to the right side. He's a block. He cuts back into the five and struggles down to about the two-yard line. Well, there's the rushing record. Walter Peyton becomes the all-time single-game rushing leader in the NFL, but he failed to come up with a touchdown. Seaman and Sevelin wrestled him down at the two-yard line, and the Vikes will have it. Well, 275 yards for Walter Peyton. I can't say I don't understand what the Bears did. I'm just saying it's rather curious. They didn't go for the three points to take a six-point lead. Although they do have the Vikings down their own two-yard line and against the win. Bears, of course, thinking first things first. They've got to have a victory before they worry about beating a team by so many points. It's third and one now for the Vikes on their own 11-yard line. This game is not over yet. With a minute 34 to go, the clock continues to run down. Double tied in alignment with Point at the wing to the right. They give it to Foreman. He's got the first down out across the 15. Still on his feet. Carries the bear with him across the 20 to the 22-yard line. First down for the Vikes. Timeout is called with 1.23 remaining. We'll be back in a moment. Comes out wide to the near side. Bob Tucker tied in. It's split in the slot to the near side. Rashad is wide to the left. Deuce backfield. Bobby Lee at quarterback. Drops back to pass. Has time. Has all day. Now throws it out the right side. Caught by McClellan. And he's to the 30 and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Driven out of there into the end of the bare bench by Gary Fencing. And it's another Viking first down with an 11-yard pickup. And they stopped the clock with 1.16 to go. So they used up only seven seconds. Moments to go. All right, third down, 15. Big play for the Vikes. Rashad wide to the far left side, White wide to the near side. And Lee again sets up the pass. Again has time. Now looking. Grab by right off. Gets away. Throws on the move. And it's caught at the 41-yard line, short of the first down. A great catch in heavy traffic by Sammy White, who was nailed immediately by Doug Plank, and Sammy apparently has twisted an ankle on the play. And Bob Lee is shaken up. He's hurt an ankle on the play as well. Well, it's going to be fourth down and about two and a half yards to go for the Vikes. Make it two yards as they spot it at the Minnesota 42-yard line. There's 49 seconds to go in the game. Jerry Myers comes in, replacing Jeff Seavey, a defensive end for the Bears. Lee is hurting. It's his right ankle, the same ankle uh, that and Fran Parkinson broke. Actually, broke a bone just above the ankle, the fibula. And the number one draft choice out of Rice, rookie Tommy Kramer, loosens up in a hurry on the far sidelines for the Vikings now. We're faced with a fourth down in two situations. Here the other way. It's 10-7 Chicago. Tough spot for the rookie Kramer. Kramer, by the way, in a couple of brief appearances, has completed five of nine for 60 yards. His first big league touchdown last week in relief of Tarkenton against the Bay, against the Bengals. White wide to the near side. Rashad wide to the left. Kramer back to pass. Almost flipped. He wings it downfield. Yes, and it's intercepted! It's intercepted by Alan Ellis on the near sideline. The best could just about seal it. Alan Ellis cutting in front of Danny White. Good at play to pick off his fifth interception of the year. Fourth Viking turnover, the third bear interception of the afternoon. Boy, he literally stole that ball away from Sammy White, and he's being congratulated by the entire bear bench. Well, I said it was a tough spot for the rookie Tommy Kramer, and it turned out to be one play, one interception. The Bears has the ball, 38 seconds to go. Now they can kill the clock, but will it go for a field goal? They've got the win at the back. There'll be a 500 ball club at five and five. The Vikings will drop to six and four. The Bears will be one game away as they go in against the Detroit Lions at the Silver Dome next Thursday. The game is over, and the Bears have beaten the Minnesota Vikings behind a record-breaking performance of Walter Payton, 10 to seven, the final here at Soldier Field. Walter Payton had indeed done his thing shattering O.J. Simpson's single-game National Football League rushing record with a whopping 275 yards on 40 carries. He gained 144 yards in the first half and added 131 in the second, including his 58-yarder. The Bears had won a game they knew they had to win and were now thrust right back in their division race along with Detroit. Both teams are tied for second place with records of 5-5. Five and five.
Peyton in erasing O.J.'s record also wiped out the bear record of 205 yards set by Gale Sayers and equal by Peyton against the Packers earlier this season. The holes were there and I just ran through them, he said after the game. I had no idea I was anywhere near the record and I don't like my teammates coming up and telling me what I've done. It breaks my concentration. In this his greatest season, the third-year man from Jackson State has gone over the century mark in rushing seven times, while he has twice topped 200 yards. Peyton now has 1,404 yards rushing and needs an even 600 more to beat O.J.'s record for most yards in one season, set in 1973. But more important than individual statistics, suddenly the Chicago Bears have come from nowhere to become a viable factor in this NFL season. The reason, quite simply, has been Walter Payton. And as he left the field last Sunday in Chicago, Payton was given a hero's ovation by football fans in attendance at Soldier Field, as well as those who were notified of his stunning achievement by electronic means while attending other games or watching on television across the country. All of them, as they've done through the years to such as Red Grange, Gale Sayers, Jim Brown, and O.J. Simpson, were united in a common salute to one man's excellence.